Good morning. This is Sue Sheets from Stampin' with Sushi, and this is Friday. Friday is the day that I share with you how to put together the card of the week. Now, I do have to apologize to everyone because somehow my Tuesday video, which had the instructions on how to cut everything for putting it together today, somehow it did not make it <laughs> to... Um, my Stampin' with Sushi site. Uh, I'm assuming that I pushed the wrong button, but I will, um, I did send out um, a little note about a half hour ago of the instructions that you would need, and then uh, what I'll do now is go over the instructions before I start to show you how to um, put the card together. So, let me switch my camera. All right, so I have these all numbered, so I won't forget. Uh, number one, you're going to need a piece of a sheet of cardstock. Hi, Donna. Um, eight and a half by 11, or this is what I'm going to show tonight, a piece of designer paper that's also eight and a half by 11. So you can choose which either one you want. Um, then number two is you'll need two pieces of a neutral color that are 3.5 times 5 inches. Now, for the card I'm going to show you this morning, I've got one white and then I put, took one from the paper pumpkin kit. And you could do that with your designer paper if you wished. Um, or you could get your two white and then trim the, one of them down so it fits on top of the white. Anyway, this is for um, number two. Then number three, you need some kind of a coordinating color with your background. And it should be two by four and a quarter. Now, once again, I've cut apart one of the paper pumpkin kits for mine. And then... The second thing you need is a different coordinating color um, that's cut two by 5.5. Now let me show you what I'm gonna use tonight and that'll give you an idea. So um, this is my card base and these are my two colors. So they coordinate with the card base. So that's kind of what you need. And then I'm using white, two whites for the rest of it. Okay, that was four. So then five, you're going to need some kind of ribbon. Um, and I absolutely love this ribbon, and I thought it went pretty well with my um, designer paper. But we're going to turn these into bookmarks and tags, and so we need a ribbon on the top. And then number six is to have sayings and embellishments. So I've got my sayings printed already, and then I grouped them so I don't forget where they go. Um, and then embellishments, um, I'm using these little um, fireflies from the July 2020 paper pumpkin kit and possibly these stars from that same kit or these sequins from the July 2021 kit. So I've just got a variety there so that when I get it assembled, I can choose one of them. And then number seven, there's a way if you, um, if you want to, that one of your um, white sheets that goes in the pocket, if it's decorated special, um, because this is going to have this saying on there and some embellishments. And uh, there's a possibility to make a little easel. Uh, just kind of squish it together to show you what I mean. That you can put on the back of this and then somebody could actually place it on a shelf. Um, you know, as something that they could look at. So if you want to make, if you like the idea of making an easel, then you're going to need a piece of the same neutral color, 11 by 3, and then you're going to score it at 4 and a quarter, 8 and a half, 9 and a quarter, 10 and a quarter. And you'll end up with 
I think that's supposed to be half. Oh, yes. This is the one that, um, yeah, on my video that you didn't get to see, I put a comma in there, and my comma doesn't look like a comma. So it's eight and a half, nine and a half, ten and a half, and you'll end up with a little half inch strip um, left over. And that's kind of how you hook your easel together. Okay. I know that was fast, and I know that some of you aren't ready. So if you are really interested in doing this, then watch the video, then gather your supplies. And the nice thing about re-watching the video is that um, you can pause it if you need to, to get measurements down, or you can re-watch it multiple times. Um, I do that with some of the videos that I watch. So I'm going to just go ahead and show you the, um, what we need to do. So the first thing we're going to have to do is score our paper. So let me go get my paper cutter. And we're going to score it in half both directions. Now my um, cutting blade is at the top and my scoring blade is at the bottom. So I always make sure my cutting blade is at the top. So first I'm gonna score it at four and a quarter. And I like to rub it back and forth a couple of times. And then I'm gonna flip it and score it at five and a half. And um, the rest of my cutting I'm gonna do with scissors. You could use your paper cutter if you wanted. All right, so now lay it down and think of this as quadrant one, two, three, four. So we're gonna start with number one and we're going to measure two and three fourths from this corner this direction and two and three-fourths from this corner this direction and make a little mark. So I've got my ruler here. I got the idea for this project from my upline Robin Armbrecht and she has a site called Really Robin Stamps and on Friday afternoons at one o'clock she does um, um, a video um, with wonderful, wonderful projects. So I would suggest if you like watching videos, and I don't always see it at one, but I make sure that I see it each week. So I've made my mark at two and three quarters, and my mark down here at two and three quarters, and now I have connected them. So now what you're going to do is down at the bottom right corner, you're going to make a measurement at four and a quarter, so make my little mark at four and a quarter. Go over here, make my mark. Oh, that's the fold. So now what you're gonna do is make a line from your mark at four and a quarter to your fold, your score line, like that. And then these, uh, these are gonna be cut off. Um, and I think I am going to use my trimmer just because it'll be neater. And this is um, the little mini trimmer that if you join Stampin' Up, I don't know, a couple of seasons ago, well, then you got one of these for free. So never mind. <laughs> I think I'll just use my scissors because I'm not that bad with cutting. Um, so you're gonna just cut from your fold on this line all the way to the end. And then turn it around and cut on this line. Okay, now we have one more cut we need to do. And if this is number one, this is number two, this is number three, this is number four. We're gonna cut on this score line between one and three, and we're gonna stop when we get to the 
other score line. So we're just kind of making a flap. And these two um, are going to be folded in. And so it's nice to make a little sliver on each side that kind of takes the rest of your score line off. And it's going to make the fold line be a lot more um, precise. So I'm going to do this one too. My hands are shaky this morning. It's hard to do when your hands are shaking. But you see it's just a tiny little sliver and I'm kind of angling it so that when I get, well, I might, I don't know if I can do it this way or not. Oh, turn it over, Sue. <laughs> okay, so I'm angling it so that when I get to the center, I'm just kind of equal right there. There. Okay, so this is basically our card. Now these two are left over and we can do something with those later. Um, so let me just show you how this goes together. You're going to fold on all your fold lines. Let me see, I'm going to fold this direction. Um, and then this is going to go this direction. Nope. This is going to go back. This is going to go... All right, let me try that again. All right, so you're going to start up at the top, and you're going to fold number one onto number two. And then take your bone folder and get a really good crease um, right here. Then you're going to take your um, three and put it on top of your two. And then you're going to take your four and put it on the back. So now it is a card. This is the front of the card with two pockets, and this is the inside and the back. So now we have to do a little bit of gluing. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of glue right, right here um, from the edge of the cut to the fold. We don't want to put any glue here because then it eliminates the pocket. So I'm going to put a little, hi Sandy, I'm going to put a little line of glue right there and bring this up and press it. And it's always best to press from the back. Okay. And now um, this is also going to be a pocket. I should have done that first. I'm going to pull this off. So you want to put a little bit of glue right here. I store this glue upside down, and then whenever I need it, the glue is just right there. All right, so there's number one. I'm going to put a little bit more glue right here. Here's number two. And then the last thing we're going to glue is right here so that we're uh, taking this back flap and joining it to the front flap. So right here. And it's always best to put your glue on the smallest piece because if you put it on the largest, you might get it in a spot where you don't need glue. Okay, so this is what the basic card looks like um, when you've done it in cardstock. Let me move this over a little bit and get my bone folder in here. Get that crease sharp. Get this crease sharp. This is what it looks like if you do it in designer paper. Um, and one reason I like to do it in designer paper is this is a way you can show off both sides of your paper. So uh, this is the top corner 
which then shows off the inside. And then here are my two pockets. And then when I open the card in the inside, I can see both sides of my designer paper. But for this example, I needed a plain color. All right, so um, I've actually got my card made. And now what I want to do is get my um, book, 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 my thing you put in a book to mark your book place bookmark oh I hate this um, I don't know if any of you are older as I am but sometimes words just don't appear when you need them to anyway this is going to be my bookmark and so I have this punch which um, punches up the top of your paper it's called the delightful tag punch um, and if you slide it and it's this uh, will do three different widths. So this is the two inch, it will do one and a half, and it'll do one inch. So because my paper is two inches, it just slides in there very nicely. And you can tell when it's at the end because it stops. And then just punch. And now I have a really cute top to my bookmark, and this is gonna be a tag. I could put this tag on a gift, um, I could write a message on the back of the tag that would be part of the card because the back is white, um, but you can do whatever you want with it, but it needs ribbon. It's got a hole for ribbon, so it needs ribbon. So this is what I'm going to use. I showed it to you earlier, and I always start when I put ribbon in something with an angled cut because then no matter what size your hole, it's going to go in there easily. So... I'm going to stick it in here, pull it through, and cut off the other end. I always wait to make sure that I have the length I want before I cut my ribbon. And now I'm going to just do an overlap and pull these ends through. Where's the other one? And if they get a little roughed up and you've made your um, ribbon a little bit longer, then you can trim them again. See how they got a little, this one especially got a little roughed up. But there's my bookmark. And I'm just gonna trim off this ribbon here. And so it needs a saying on it. So. Um, this is one of the sayings from the paper pumpkin kit this month, the world awaits you. Um, and I thought that would be a fun bookmark or a saying to have on your bookmark. So um, I'm going to put some glue on the back. This glue is great because it's repositionable and also um, it spreads. So you really don't need much. And then I'm going to turn this over and rub really hard to get it to stay. Okay, so now this is gonna go right here in the pocket. And I might put some more embellishments on in a minute, but I just wanna get these started. And so then this coordinates with it. The world awaits you, let the adventure begin. So this is the one I'm putting on my tag. Or I guess it could be another bookmark if you read a lot of more, multiple books at the same time. I don't. I'd get my plot mixed up in my characters, but I know a lot of people do. And cut my other end. And then do my little flip. So what I do is I make like a circle. And then... I push the ends through the center of the circle and pull them out and tighten this little knot. And I don't care whether the knot is right down here or not. Um, all right, those ends look pretty good. And then this one will go in the same pocket. All right, so I've got my two bookmarks in here. Now this front looks really, really plain, doesn't it? 
not not very attractive. So one of the first things I'm going to do is use my Versamark pad. Now the Versamark is an ink that's clear, but when you stamp it on something, it makes a darker image. And this is from the Paper Pumpkin Kit, and it's like a pile of needles, maybe that have fallen off a pine tree. And so I'm just going to stamp this all over, turning it around each time I stamp, and stamp it all over as a background, because I think just this little bit on the back of the card makes all the difference in the world. It doesn't look so empty and plain anymore with just this little design on the background. See how it's made the original cardstock dark? There. Okay, so that's not enough, though, I don't think. So this is what I'm also going to put on the front. This is one of the stamps. Uh, this is one of the punch-outs from the Paper Pumpkin Kit. Oh, wait, i got to put this on first. So I cut apart the envelope from the Paper Pumpkin Kit, something I love to do so I can make alternate cards. And this is a strip from the envelope, so I'm going to put that on first. And when I put it on, I want to make sure that I don't go any further than right there because I want it to not interfere with any of the pockets or anything. So I'm going to put it right here. So now I've added a bit of color, and that's crooked. And so when you use this glue, if you don't get it right the first time, it takes a while for it to dry permanently, and so you can move things around easily. Um, and then I'm going to put my saying, dream big, aim high. I think I'm going to just center it. Let's pop it up. That's always fun. So I'm going to put three on there, one on each end and one in the middle, so that when I put it on the card, the middle doesn't sag. And I'm going to overlap it so a lot of the green shows and the saying shows. All right, now I uh, have that tree. So um, the light green part is how the tree came, and then there's a stamp uh, for the needles that came in the kit. So that's um, how I got the double color on there, and I'm going to just kind of put that um, flat right behind my dream big. I tried to get all my sayings in this card to have kind of like the same theme. They could be like a graduation card or a card for somebody that's life is changing. Um, and then I'm going to, this is a smaller one, and I put the needles on that too. I'm going to put that right next to this, I think. And now uh, I have a decision to make that you guys will have to help me with. I have one more tree. I don't think I need it. All right, so that looks pretty good. And I think I'm just, for fun, going to put a few of these sequins on there. Um, because this sort of looks like night, so maybe there's little um, fireflies flying around. Now, um, this is a, if you haven't seen it before, it's called a Take Your Pick Tool. It has a little bit of clay on the end, and these adhesive, these sequins are adhesive backed. So all I have to do is press my tool into the sequins and push, push it, and um, it's off and the glue is still on it. I love that. No more sticky hands for me. And then maybe one right there. Okay. All right. So now the next thing I need is my easel. So I'm going to put some glue on this flap right here because this will create the easel. Fold it. Fold this little half inch strip up. Bring the front 
oops, I better get in the camera. I, I forget to watch from my camera, sorry. So I'm folding everything up, including that little half inch strip. And then I'm bringing the front down and pressing it on the glue. Turn this over and press it really good and maybe even use the bone folder. Make sure I have a good crease at the bottom and at the top. Okay, and so you see how that makes an easel. And then this is what I want on my easel. So I am going to put glue all over this part and then I'm going to lay it towards the bottom of my uh, card. So let me get the glue on there. Okay, see, you don't need an awful lot. And I will attach this down here, kind of center it, press it, move it so it is really centered. There we go. Bring it over, rub it. Okay, and this is going to go right in here, but um, when the person pulls it out, they need more than that, don't they? So I'm going to put this on there, let your light shine, um, which is what this is all about. Um, I'm not going to pop it up because it's going to go down in part of the card. Put it right here. And what about a few cute little fireflies? These are from um, a paper pumpkin kit from a year ago. And at the time I was getting three of them, so I had oodles and oodles of these. So I'm just going to do that. Because they say do three, and that draw, draws your eyes around and this is really what I want them to focus on the saying. So I'm just going to apply some glue to the back. One. And you try to get them so they're not in a line. So this guy, I think, is going to barely touch the saying. And then this guy, maybe right there. There. So now I have something that might somebody might want to lay on a shelf just to and remember that they need to let their light shine. And this is going to go right in here. Now, that's just part of the card, because if we open it up now, we have an inside. And so I have this, I pre-stamped, that says, you light up my life, and this is what I would write my message on. Um, and I just put some trees and a saying, and um, right there. So I'll get this added to the inside. Hi, Peggy Davidsmeyer. How is your husband doing? And you're not going to believe this, but I have emailed you and texted you and whatever, and I have a package here for you from several years ago. But anytime you're in, near uh, my area of town, come by and it's all ready for you. Okay. Um, so this is what a one sheet layered pocket card looks like. Now, the one thing I think I might do is take these off and make them smaller because I'd kind of like them not to show until I pull this out. Um, so I, I will fix these two, um, the bookmark and the tag, so that they just show through like this card does, and you don't really know what's on the inside of it. 
But this is the, the basic part of it, and isn't it cute? And when I get this one finished, which I will be doing before tonight, it'll have two tags in it. And then something in the back, and then something else in here. So it's such a fun, very easy to do card that I hope you will enjoy. And I will put a place on my Stampin' with Sushi Facebook group that says post your one sheet layered pocket cards here. And if you make one, take a picture and please post it there. The other thing that I'm trying to do, uh, I do post on my blog, which is called Sushi Stamps blogspot.com I post on there Wednesday, Thursday, and Fridays um, and have this video on that site and then I also am um, getting my important videos onto YouTube so I hope you enjoyed watching the video I hope you'll try making the card and um, I will be back on Tuesday at 10.30 with a video that shows you the cutting instructions for the card of the week. Have a great, great weekend, and um, I will see you later. Bye-bye.